Hi, my name is Dale. I'm a surveyor here at Hart Square, and I want to demonstrate for you what some of the equipment is that, were that was used by surveyors in the 1840s. The device that I have here is called a circumferter. It's a surveyor's compass. This particular one is from about 1815 to 1820. It's made of brass and it is used to measure angles. I look through the near sight, through the large opening on the far side so that my eye is in line with the needle and whatever object I'm looking at. By measuring from tree to tree, the compass is put right in between that. Then when I make the adjustment, I read what the needle tells me and write that down in my book as the angle. The next measurement that I need is the distance. With those two pieces of information, I can then draft a map that shows uh, that piece of property, that angle. So to measure the distance, we use a chain. The chain was a physical device that was a chain, but also a measurement device. This chain is an original 18th century uh, chain. It is 66 feet long. Each link, the 100 links that make up the chain, are 7.92 inches. It really doesn't matter because it's one one hundredth of a chain. Land in the 18th and 19th centuries was not measured in feet, it was measured in acres. And so we use a device that made that easier to do the math. So rather than measuring in feet, we'd have to divide by 43,560. That's math I can't do in my head. But 10 square chains was an acre. So if I had a piece of property that was two chains by five chains, I can get the area by multiplying two times five is 10, divide that into, or do the unit conversion from square chains to acres by moving the decimal over one, 10 square chains, 1.0 acres. So it really made the math much, much sim simpler than using feet. If we look closely at the chain, we can actually count the individual links as we pull the chain, or we can look for these pieces called the tellers. So in this chain, we have a hand that looks like four fingers. That's telling me that's 40 links down the chain. Right here, I have a single point that tells me it's 10 links down the chain. So the chain can be used to measure either way. It'll go one, two, three, four. The middle chain is, the middle link is five, or uh, round, and then it goes four, three, two, one. So the chain can be used to measure either direction. And we look for the tellers, and that speeds up the process. I can also measure short distances with an offset staff. So the offset staff has uh, these black and white colors. Each one is 7.92 inches, or one link long. So the offset staff can be used to validate the chain at the beginning of the day, make sure that it's one chain long, and also be used to make offset measurements or small measurements in the field. As we measure distances that are longer than a chain, we'll simply pull the chain from whatever our starting point is, this tree for instance, out to 66 feet, and at the end of that distance, we place an arrow, and that marks the end of that point. Then we pick the chain up and move it down again, and we place another arrow at the end of that chain. The rear chain man will actually pick up the last arrow and put it in his empty quiver. And they continue to do that process. Then if you forget how far you've gone, you can simply look at the rear man's quiver and however many arrows he has, that tells you how many chains you have gone up to that point. If you've gone more than 10 chains, because that would be a full quiver, then that's called an out. So an out was actually a unit of measure. Later on, compasses tended to have out keepers on them. So every 10 chains, when the chainman yelled out, the surveyor would click another out. Before that, they would actually take a stick, maybe and put a notch in it for each out, or you could actually put a pin in your waistcoat buttons and move it from the bottom one on up through the buttons uh, to keep track of the measurements. So when we measure the distance with the chain, I would then write that unit down in my book as well. 
So then I have both the angle and the measure in chains and links. The uh, unit of measure actually allows us to measure down to uh, the nearest eight inches, but in practice what we find is that they really measure to the nearest rod or uh, pole. That's one quarter of a chain or 16 and a half feet. Sounds like odd measures today, but it made sense because land wasn't as valuable in that day. We measured it by acres. As land became more valuable, we began to think of it in feet. So modern surveyors will actually use laser range finders to measure down to just a fraction of an inch uh, by simply sending a beam out there rather than pulling the physical chain. Now that I have both the angle and the measure, we'll go off to my surveying table and we'll begin to draft a map. Okay, now we're ready to take the notes that we made out in the field and turn it into a map on a piece of paper. So using a compass, we can lay that down and I use a pin to help find a center point. Then I can read each of the measurements. My first one is south one degree west. So I'll go south and then one degree to the west and make a mark. My next one is north 80 west. So I'll come up here north and then 80 to the west and I can make another mark. And I'll continue on through each of the angles that I've measured. Then I can take a ruler and connect my center point to each of the lines, draw in the length of that line, and then I need to scale the line to whatever scale I want to make the map. And here I have a bone scale, because it's made from a piece of ox bone, and I can actually scale out 2 degrees 21 chains. So, or two chains, 21 links. So I'll go to 21 on my scale. And now between those two points is exactly that distance. So I'll go from my same point along my line to that point, and I prick the map there. So that's exactly the length of that line. Then I go to my next line that I drew. And I can use the parallel rule to drag that down to the previous line and draw in my next line. And then once again, scale it. This is exactly one chain using the same scale. I adjust that to one chain and then I can mark that. And I'll continue the process all the way along until the map closes. Every educated man that went to school at all would have learned the art of surveying. There were plenty of books. This was a way to teach uh, standard mathematics and geometry and everyone would have learned that as a very practical skill. As a man you would have bought land someday. This gives you the ability to measure that land yourself and understand what you purchased. I hope this has given you some interest in how land was surveyed and how it was drawn on paper. Thank you.